My name is Sierra Flores and I am the Everyday Educator. Today's video, it comes by special request. A lot of you have asked me to make a video comparing Zoom to Google Meet because we're moving into remote learning and people want to know what's the best platform for me to use for my online classes. And so today I'm going to compare the free versions only so that that way everyone has access and then from here, I'll let you decide which is best for you and your learners. To begin, you will type in meet.google.com and you'll get a screen that looks like this where you'll be able to join or start the meeting or your screen might look like this where you'll click to start a new meeting or you can join a meeting by entering the link or the code. I'm gonna start a new meeting so Let's click this and I'm going to start an instant meeting. And so now you'll see that I am ready to go. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the microphone because right now I'm recording my screen and so I don't need my voice coming through on my camera and on my screen recording. So that's why I turned off my volume. So I'm going to click join now so that I can join the meeting. And now you will see that I am in the meeting. Now, if I wanna add people to this meeting, I can copy the link or I can just add people directly. If I click add people directly, then an email box will pop up and I can just type in their Gmail accounts and then it sends out the invites directly. So I'm going to go ahead and like I showed you, I copied that link. And so now I'm going to invite some people to my meeting. Right now I'm joining the meeting from my iPad and from my cell phone. And so I'm the meeting host. And so everybody that wants to join has to go through me first before I allow them to join. So there we go, Sierra Flores wants to join this meeting. I can deny her or I can admit her. I will go ahead and admit her. All right. Make sure you mute. All right. Now for the next one, I am now going to, this is crazy because I have like my phone, but then I also have my iPad. I'm literally on so many different screens right now. This is wild. All right. Somebody else wants to join. So let's let them in. Admit this person. And remember, you have to hit mute, otherwise it looks crazy. Like I'm literally on all these screens right now. I don't even know which one that I should be looking at. I'm going to turn the camera off because I literally cannot concentrate because there are so many screens right now. So camera off. Got it. Let's turn my camera off on this one. Let's see, camera off. Ooh, there we go. Now I just have one image. So now that was confusing. It looked like that because I was doing it all by myself. Whenever you have more people in your meeting, then you're going to be able to control that a lot better. Anyway, so what I can do with my settings, now you see there's three people in here. I can open up the chat and say, hey, let's chat. I can send that if I want to. I can just look at the people that are in here. That's cool. Um, another thing I can do, I can go to more options and I can change the layout. And so this kind of lets me pick the way that I want to see my guests that are in the meeting. And I can change that. Maybe I want to click it this way instead. So I can see both sets of people. The only thing is that I can't see me. I have to look all the way up here at this tiny box if I want to see me or I can click this and then it makes it kind of bigger so I can see what it is that I'm doing. For example, if I was teaching or if I'm modeling something here, I can show you. The other feature is present now. I can do my entire screen. I can just do one window or I can just do a certain tab. I'm going to just mirror my entire screen so um, you could see that. 
or I could just do one window. And so here you'll see some of the windows that I already have open. And I'm going to open my snipping tool. Let's see what the last thing I snipped was. That's the last thing I snipped, a picture of where is Waldo. And so you can kind of see that it shows that I'm presenting to everyone. And so everybody in my meeting right now can see. And so if you look at my iPad right now, you'll see that this is a presenter screen, which is my screen. And that's what everybody else sees. And I'm sharing, so I'm going to click stop sharing right here. And so now all that will go away. And it is up to you if you choose that you prefer this way of presenting. The website for Zoom, you can type in zoom.com, you can type in zoom.us. It's going to lead you here where you can sign in and start a meeting or you can download to your computer so that that way you are able to have it here in kind of like the form of like a web-based app. So I can click join a meeting if I want to join and there I'll just type in the meeting code or I can host a new meeting if I want from directly from here. So let's host a new meeting. I will start my video so that you can see me and um, it says that I'm muted. Remember, it's because my voice is coming through the screen share, and so I don't need my voice coming through twice, because then you're going to get this really ear-piercing sound that nobody wants to listen to. So now I'm going to go here, and I'm going to invite people. And this is one way. There are multiple ways to invite people. But up here, there is a meeting code, and so on my phone, I am going to type in that meeting code. And so I already have Zoom up on my cell phone. So I'll press join and the meeting ID is 919-0106 and then 6507 join. Now it's my choice if I decide to, this is crazy. It's my choice if I decide that I want to enable a waiting room. And so if I enable a waiting room, it'll be just like it was in Google Meet where you had to um, allow people or accept them to come in, okay? But for today, since it's me logging into my account, talking with me, myself and I, it's gonna look a little bit different. So I'm gonna turn the camera off, stop the video, all right, now I'm going to join from my iPad. And again, I typically wouldn't do this. This is purely in the interest of showing you how you can have multiple people in the meeting and how you can rearrange your, um, the, the, what is it called? You can rearrange where the gallery where you see each individual photo of the participants. And so typically you wouldn't do it this way. It'd be you and the people you're presenting to, your work colleagues, maybe it's your students. All right, um, 0106, I'm logging in the meeting code right now. 6507, join. And so now you'll see that I'm in this meeting three times. There are three of me now. So turn off the video. Okay, so now that I'm in Zoom, I have a lot of different options that I can use. Let me make this full screen so I can see everything. Okay, so if I want to add reactions, I come here and I can add reactions and you see the icon there that popped up. I'm giving a thumbs up now, way to go. Another thing I can do is enable breakout rooms. And so with breakout rooms, it allows children or people, adults, and so it allows you to go into separate rooms and communicate with each other. And so that's one feature. You can also do that on Google Meet. I can also enable closed captioning, similar to Google Meet. Now, one feature that I have here that I do not have in Google is the, the option of recording. I can record this meeting if I want to, even on the free account. Sharing my screen, I'll click share, then I choose which screen do I want to share with the crowd. Just make sure you click share computer sound if you want to share that sound with anyone that's coming through your speaker. So whether it be your voice, whether it be um, the audio from a video you're playing, totally your choice. Here's the chat, and, it's, and then I do have options here for who can chat and who they can chat with. And then participants, 
I can invite people and I can also manage participants. So let's say that somebody was being inappropriate. I can remove them by putting them in the waiting room so they can take like a timeout or I can remove them altogether. You're kicked out of the meeting and you're not allowed to be here anymore. I can rename, I can make host. If I wanna pass over to them the ability to be the host and have all the controls, maybe I had to leave and I need my partner to host the meeting for me while I'm not here, that's an option to use there. I can ask them to start their video. And so that way, if I need to, if I hear you, but I need to see you, I can at, click ask to start video and then it gives them a prompt. The host would like for you to share your video. So those are some options. And here are some other options at the bottom that participants have. You can um, click there if I understand something. I can like it, I can dislike it. Here, if it's like, whoa, I need a break, like you're going too fast, I need a break. And then with this one, it shows if I'm away. And so um, those are just some options, all right? And so in these signals, you can use, but I mean, as from someone who has presented all summer long using Zoom, I don't typically look at this window because I'm typically sharing my screen, but I mean, it's nice to know that it's here if you need it. And then you can mute all participants so that that way everybody is on mute and nobody is talking, all right? And then this one, you can allow people to unmute themselves, but if you don't want them, if it's like um, students, or if you're in a situation to where you do not need anybody talking, do not give them the right to unmute themselves because then they're going to be unmuting and talking while you're talking. So that's an option that you have. Continue on with security. And so with this, you can lock down the meeting so nobody else can come in this meeting no matter what. And I can allow participants to, and here are the options that I have for what I can allow participants to do. I can remove someone and I can also report them. Moving on to the video options, I can choose a virtual background if I want to choose a virtual background. Let's say that I wanted to go and I can download this if I want. I don't have to, but if you are to go and click that you have a green screen for green screen, for example, you could click and download if you want but it kind of makes your background, like you have a virtual background. And so it's like it transports you away somewhere. Like if I wanted to go to San Francisco and then there's another option as well. If I wanted to come here, I can add an image or a video that is my background. So I know a lot of teachers, they have images of their actual classrooms. And so they will take a picture of their classroom and put it up here so that they can go ahead and make them feel, make their kids feel like they're at school without really being at school. And then while I'm here, there are several different options. And this one I really like is called Touch Up My Appearance. So that way, if you are on, um, it'll kind of give you like a little quick touch up of how you look. And then Google Meet does that as well, but only if you're on a cell phone using it. And so here are your typical settings, all the things that you need that you can go through. And these are things that you'll have to go through on your own time. And so, um, as you can see, there are a lot of features that Zoom has. And so, and it continues going, continues going on here where you can enable the closed caption just like with Google Meet. And then here are the mute options. And so this is where you can do your settings as far as the microphone and speaker. And you can, you can have people dial in on the phone if they don't want to use video supports. And if I need to end the meeting, I click here. I can leave the meeting if I want to leave the meeting. But just remember that when you leave, everybody else is still there. So they can be talking and chatting without you. And I wouldn't recommend that at all if you're using this for the purpose of teaching children, teaching students. So you have to click end meeting for all. And then it'll go away. And that is it. Goodbye, Zoom. So with all of that said, I will leave you with Google Meet, a few pros about Google Meet. So for one, it's very user friendly. It's simple and quick. You just press a button and you can join. You're able to add people easily if they have a Gmail account. 
This integrates well with all things Google with that G Suite that is available. And then you can host a meeting for 40 minutes. You can have up to 100 people on the free version. And then things that you can also do is arrange the screen. How do you want, as far as seeing everyone's image, you can see, choose how you want it to look. And so another thing with Google Meet that I really like is that it's an app, but it's also a web application that you can use. So you'll go to meet.google.com and then you can access it. And then lastly, it's, it's easy. You click a button and join. I know I said that, but it's so easy. It's very user friendly. And as far as Zoom goes, on the other hand, with Zoom, you can have 60 minute meetings for the free version and you can have up to 100 people on that free version. And then also you're able to have annotation tools. And so that's really helpful if you're having students or if you're um, leading a workshop of some sort or a conference or a meeting, you can have people draw and write directly on the screen. Zoom also has a whiteboard feature that allows people to write directly on the screen. You're able to do um, breakout rooms with both and you're able to share your screen with both. Um, Zoom has a lot more security features than Google Meet does because you, we know, all have heard about the Zoom bombing debacles. And so they've really buckled down on meeting security and you can lock the room down and not let anyone in. And so um, another thing I really like about Zoom is the ability to remove people and send them to the waiting room or just kick them out of the meeting altogether. That's really helpful if you have people that are being disrupted or if somebody's there that's not supposed to be there, just kick them out. You don't need to mess with anything else. And so um, as far as my final verdict, I will say that Google Meet is way better for just quick meetings. If it's just you, your colleagues, you and your friends, just something really quick that's gonna be a few minute call just to catch up, use Google Meet because it goes and it is just so quick and it's easy. Zoom on the other hand, if you're doing anything on a larger scale, such as teaching a class, leading a professional development workshop, if you're trying to lead a conference, things on a larger scale, that especially where you're going to need your participants to be able to interact with you, I really think Zoom is the better choice here because you have your annotation tools, you have the whiteboard, multiple participants can share their screen, you're able to have controls as far as muting people and unmuting them and kicking them out of the room altogether. And it just works better on a large scale. You heard what I had to say. Now it's time for you to decide. So drop in the comments below, what platform do you prefer? And who knows, maybe you don't like Google Meet and maybe you can't stand Zoom. So there's some totally new option that you want me to make a video on or that you want others to learn about. So if this helped you in any way, like the video, share it with your teaching friends, and definitely subscribe, subscribe, subscribe so that you always are informed when my next video drops.